One of the things Barth loves about photographs is that they offer up treasure troves of ethnographical information, which would otherwise be obscured in something like a painting. One can really slow down time here and examine the fine details of a culture captured in a photograph. In chapter 13, Barth concludes that as of yet, he has not said anything that would distinguish photography from painting. Saying that, it is not the similarity with painting that makes a photograph art, but rather, and this seems strange, photography is connected to art via theater. How? By death? What? What does that even mean? Barth explains that theater has its origins in the portrayals of the dead. Actors would paint themselves up as people who have already expired. Actors originally were both dead and alive. How does this connect to photography? We may strive to make a photograph as lifelike as possible, but beneath it we find death. What I take Barth to be saying here is that despite the vivacity of the photograph, it is an unrepeatable existential instance. Though dressed up, that moment is forever gone. Barth imagines in chapter 14 that the role of the operator or photographer is to surprise or perhaps reveal an aspect of existence taken for granted. Barth enumerates five types of surprises for the spectator. One, when the photograph is rare or contains a rarity, like a two-headed boy. Two, when a photograph immobilizes a particular instance that captures an act which rapidly unfolds. What would be an example of this in our modern times? Perhaps the moment when Oswald recoils from Jack Ruby's shot. Three, the surprise of prowess. If I understand Barth correctly here, this applies to someone who repeatedly shoots the same sort of subject and perhaps refines it over the years. He uses the example of the photographer who did nothing but improve upon the photographing of an exploding milk droplet. Four, the fourth surprise is just contorting technique, making things blurry or exploiting a flaw in the capturing process. And lastly, five, the lucky find, when things just line up in such a way that it makes for an interesting photograph. Right place, right time situation. I suppose these are the photographs that make um, going out with one's camera feel like a scavenger hunt. All these types of surprising photographs have one thing in common, defiance, meaning they defy the rules for what constitutes the interesting or good photograph. One has to ask here, how does surprise fit into the interest in a photograph? Does surprise merely jolt us, but then we come to find that such a photo uh, or such photos don't really contain the duality of studium and punctum that cause adventure? Or do all surprising photographs have the quality of advenience by definition? So we shall see.